Good morning everybody, how are we all this morning? I do hope that this broadcast finds you very well indeed. I know it looks like I'm sitting in the dark this morning, I'm really not, I've got loads of lights on. It's just uh, a bit uh, dull and overcast uh, here in Dorset. Weather report, as we usually do for Technique Tuesday. Uh, very rude of me, I've not introduced myself this morning but I think most of you know who I am. My name is Ali Board, I'm a professional artist, art tutor and author and I bring you you Technique Tuesday live via Facebook but you can also watch it on Catch Up uh, via my blog and via my YouTube channel. Now if you are watching live this morning then uh, please do chat, uh, put your comments into the Facebook page. I will try to get to as many as I possibly can. My apologies if I don't see yours pop up. I've got a painting to concentrate on and the painting that we're going to be doing this morning is we're going to put some finishing touches to that lilac breasted roller that we've been working on. Let's just show you the photograph that we have been working on at this beautiful creature and we've been working on it in pastel and today I'm going to be uh, using some pastel pencils to apply some finishing touches to that. Now I'm not going to spend uh, a huge amount of time doing the pastel pencil because otherwise you're just sitting there watching me squeak away with a few pencils. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some techniques. I'm gonna complete it as best I can and it will certainly give you a flavor of how you might want to finish a similar portrait. But before I do any of that, I have some news for you. Now, I know we've been talking about this over the last few weeks, but you may have seen via my newsletters and via social media, a project that's uh, popped up that you can get involved with. It's called 30 Days Hath September. And let's uh, just bring up a little graphic for you. The idea is during September, I bring you 30 prompts with a there or there about 30 minute demonstration over the 30 days. Now, um, there's lots more news to come on this. There's lots more information to come out yet. But what I wanted to do was to give you the uh, prompts very early on. Now, you can find them all over the place. There are some odd ones there. There's some kind of standard ones, you know, things like a tree and a home and pirouette and things like that. They're kind of a little bit self-explanatory, but there are some as well that are a little more cryptic, shall we say. Let's call them cryptic. Out of left field is kind of what I call. And the idea is that uh, on the 1st of September, I will be doing uh, a demonstration based around the theme of beginnings. And then on the 2nd, I'll be doing one based around the theme of ancestry and so on and so forth. Now, the thing that is more important than anything else is that uh, if you would like to take part, please don't think that you have to do every single day or you're a complete failure. That is not the case at all. I have set myself 30 prompts for 30 minutes for 30 days because it, it's my challenge and it's very good for me to do something uh, every day for 30 minutes every day. Uh, but that doesn't mean, don't, please don't sit there thinking, oh, crikey, Ali, I can't take part in this because I don't have uh, all of those days set aside. I get it. I absolutely get it. If you've only got one day a week, one day of the month, however you want to participate in it, then I would be thrilled if you could. You don't even have to do the right prompt on the right day. <laughs> you do with it what you will. You know me by now. You know that I like to just encourage you to participate. However you participate is fine by me. Now, one of the things that I would like to happen, if it's possible, you just need a tiny little bit of social media knowledge. Um, if you do participate in it, can you do two things for me? No, three things for me. First, share it to Facebook. Now you can share that on your own page. You can share it on any of the um, pages that I run. So. Um, learning to paint or if you're an All Aboard Artist member share it in there or you might follow me over on Instagram and when you do that tag me in it 
so to tag me in it, you need to put the at symbol and then Ali Board Artist, A-L-I-B-O-A-R-D-A-R-T-I-S-T. And you'll see one of my profiles come up. Just click on that profile and it will change the, uh, the color of the text ever so slightly. And what that means is that I will get a notification and I can then go and find it and I can go and see it. And uh, because I'd love to see what things you've come up with. And the other thing I would like you to do, this is a bit more tricky if you're not used to social media, is to use a hashtag. Now, the idea of a hashtag is so that people can search for similar subjects. So you've got that kind of that hashtag symbol, that two lines down, two lines across, and then put 30 days hath September. So that's three zero hath September. All one word, no spaces in it whatsoever. And again, you'll get a little suggestion pop up and you click on the one that matches your text and then whenever anybody is searching for that subject, they'll be able to put in any of the search engines, 30 days has September, and they'll get to see all the beautiful artwork. And that way we're building a community, we can help each other out, we can see how people have interpreted that. Now, where is it that you need to go to see the demonstrations that I do? Now, some of the demonstrations are gonna be live, so they're gonna be talked over, we've got four I think uh, Technique Tuesdays that are going to do uh, the 30 days themes. The rest of them uh, for the most part are going to be just visual. There, there might be a soundtrack to it but because of the way that um, I've had to film them or I have uh, are interacting with them you won't necessarily get talking over the top but you will get some lovely close-ups of what I'm doing. Now where can you find those? If you go to my website www.learningtopaint.co.uk and you go to the resources. That's where you would ordinarily go to find Technique Tuesday. And you can see there already, 30 days hath September. And it's like a blog. So uh, that first one uh, there on the right hand side talks about uh, it coming up. And the one on the left hand side uh, where it says, what is 30 days all about? Click or tap on where it says read more. And you can read all about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. There's the list of prompts there too. And every day there will be a new post on that blog. So you can go and watch it. You can save them all up until the end of the week and binge watch them. Or you can watch them every day. They are going to go live at nine o'clock every single morning. So uh, quite the challenge for me as well. So I hope that makes sense with what 30 days is all about. If you are signed up to my newsletter, you'll get all that information drop into your inbox anyway. Now, without further ado, I need to say good morning to those people who are watching me live via Facebook. Who have we got? <laughs> First one up is Rosie. She's saying, bonjour, bonjour, Rosie. Um, who else we got? Anne, Rabina, Jane, Hilary P, Anita, good morning. Uh, Joy, uh, Anne, uh, lots of people are commenting on the weather, which is awesome. Uh, Maureen, Heather, Sandy, ah, my mum is in, Liz is in, Sheena, Simone, Joy, uh, Val just down the road, uh, Jilly, Viv, uh, Catherine, good morning. I spent the weekend with you, my lovely. Uh, Barbara, Teresa, Sheena, Linda D. Oh, gosh, everyone's in. Um, who else we got? Uh, Joe, Steve. Oh, good morning, Steve. Good morning to all from a cool and clear Ohio, US. Good morning to you. Thank you ever so much uh, for taking the time to join. Fiona, Alice, Thea, who else we got? Uh, so Viv is saying number six is actually my birthday and you'll probably see the comment as well where my mum has put mine too. So uh, already people thinking ahead about those 30 days prompts. Cheryl, good morning. Trudy, ah, Tina is in the room as well. My lovely ballet compatriot uh, saying morning. Love Tina and Ava, good morning. Good morning, Ava. And uh, Karen is in the room too. How lovely to have you all with us. Awesome. Shall we get cracking on this lilac breasted roller that we've been working on? Here that bird is. I'm not entirely sure if it's a he or a she. So I'm going to call it they for the time being. Um, and last week we uh, blocked it in, didn't we? We used our pastel sticks to block in, to just give it a little bit of colour. Today we're going to be looking at doing the detail in it. So what am I going to be using for that? Look at that delicious lot. Now please don't, again, don't think that if you want to do a project like this, 
you've got to use lots and lots and lots of colours. Now, you don't have to use lots and lots of colours at all. Admittedly, we have got the most colourful bird ever. Um, I chose that on purpose. But please don't think you've got to have hundreds of pencils. You really don't. In fact, the more pencils you have, the more you choose. If I had less pencils, then I would be making colour choices much more easily. So I've got my pastel pencils there. I know that uh, one of the questions that's going to crop up this morning is, uh, OK, Ali, which brand do you use? And as you can probably see, all of them <laughs> is the answer. Uh, I've got, what have I got here? I've got Stabilo, which is, uh, their pastel pencils are called Carbothello. I have got Karen Dash pastel pencils. I have got Faber-Castell Pitt pastel pencils. And I have got Derwent pastel pencils, which pretty much takes care of all the major brands of pastel pencil, if I'm honest. They all have different qualities. Some are harder than others. If you had to pin me down, if you absolutely had to pin me down on which is my favourite, I think I would probably say the Stabilo, the Carbothello ones, but I have to say the Pitt pastel pencils are excellent too. It doesn't matter what brand you have. Some of them are going to be hard. Some of them are going to be super soft, like the Caran d'Ache ones, for example. Some of them are going to be uh, quite expensive. Some of them are going to be very affordable. You choose whichever ones you want. And what I've done, like I said to you last week, is I've been through my photograph and I've tried to match up colours that I want. Now, chances are I'm not going to use all of these today. I just like to put them kind of all in my hand so that I have uh, enough to choose from. And obviously, because I'm doing a live broadcast, I can't be tottering off across the other side of my studio to go and find new colours. I need to have as many in my hand as possible. What else have I got in front of me today? I've got that scrap of pastel mat uh, paper. This was where I was testing out my colour choices yesterday. I was just making sure that they sort of fit with, uh, with everything. If I was really, really good, what I should have done is write all the colour names down. But I haven't. Uh, okay. Um, what else have I got? I've also got a paper stump. So this is a compressed piece of paper. Uh, that it comes to a point and I'm going to use it for blending to make sure that I get some nice clean crisp marks how do you clean this you can see it's got a filthy end and it's got a nice clean end and uh, you need a piece of sandpaper for that and all that you're going to need to do probably not a good idea to do it over your painting but let's do it anyway is that you rub it backwards and forwards on that piece of sandpaper and you can see it cleans it up really rather beautifully. So I've got that there. Other bits of kit that I've got, I have this pencil sharpener. Now, pencil sharpeners are a contentious issue because everybody has their own idea about it. Most of the time, I prefer to use a rotary pencil sharpener. So those great big ones that you clamp your pencil in and roll it around. But that's not always conducive to be using it in a broadcast like this. So I particularly uh, like this pencil sharpener. This is made by the company KUM, K-U-M. It's called an automatic long point sharpener. The idea being that you put it in one side to take the wood away. And on the other side, you have got um, a sharpener that will just take the colour strip away. You've also got tiny little sharpeners either side. So if you're using uh, mechanical pencils or similar, so I quite like this. The other thing I like about it is that it has replaceable blades, so it's not going to go dull. These aren't cheap to buy, um, so uh, having replaceable blades uh, is certainly a bonus. And then all you need is uh, this, a little set of screwdrivers. This came out of a cracker one year that I used to replace those blades, so uh, not uh, particularly expensive at all. And then the other two bits of kit that I've got, I've got this uh, fantastically lethal weapon, which is the knife that I use for sharpening my pencils, which is a hook blade as opposed to a straight blade, just because I find that easier to do. Don't worry, I'm going to try very hard not to cut myself. I've just got to uh, blow my surface because I've got little detritus of pastel pencils. Two minutes. There we go. Head in shot, not good. Uh, so I use a hook blade uh, to sharpen just because I find I snap 
the uh, colour strips a little bit less. Um, who I've got, I've missed some hellos. Hello, Ali D. Hello, Helen. Wendy. Hello, Wendy. Um, uh, last time watching you live and not on catch up. I so look forward to your broadcast, Alison. You are a tonic. You are very sweet indeed. I do hope that you're well, Wendy. Long time no see. Um, so I've got my uh, hook blade here. And then the other thing that I've got, which I talked about last week, uh, is this um, pencil point refiner, uh, which is a bit like a piece of sandpaper. And I'm sure that you could rig up something very similar, which you can use for refining the point of your graphite pencil, pastel pencil, whatever it is. And then it has that little cup on it to catch all of the um, shavings and sharpenings that you use. Um, and I've got that clipped to the side of my drawing board. You can just see it uh, in shot just over here. So without further ado, shall we get started? Let's give you another quick reminder of our bird. Uh, where is it? There. So what I'm gonna work on today, you can see there's loads of detail in it, absolutely masses of detail, um, which we're not gonna have time, unfortunately, to do all of it, but we're certainly gonna have uh, much, uh, a really good idea of how much is required to get the basics in. Nope, not that one, hello, that one. <laughs> so I'm gonna concentrate uh, on the eye, and the beak and a few little bits of detail and then we'll kind of call it a day bearing in mind that uh, you're going to have a lot more time than I am to work on it so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the eye so let's pull some colors out to be able to do that I've got a pit in a dark brown uh, where's my trusty pit black as you can see much shorter use that one a lot uh, do I need anything else I probably need a white I've got my Derwent white for that uh, you'll tend to find pastel pencils, uh, white pastel pencils, which you will use an awful lot. They vary an awful lot in hardness and softness. I know from experience that actually the Derwent one is really good for the highlights. So let's get cracking on this eye. I think I need uh, to sharpen this brown a little bit more. So I'm going to put it through the uh, point sharpener here. Let's give it another few spins around the block. Just kind of refine that and then over on my uh, point sharpener I'm gonna bring it in so I got a, a really nice fine point that I'm working with and then I can go good job I got my glasses on isn't it then I could go back in with my pencil and let's work on the eye straight away because then our gorgeous little bird is gonna start to have some really lovely personality so let's get that in over here. Uh, the pupil is really quite dark on the bird. Uh, I'm gonna have to uh, do a bit of blow. Now, do you remember I was saying don't blow your work? Do you remember, do you remember hearing me say that? Yeah, I'm gonna do that anyway, <laughs> just because it's quicker. But I do have, uh, just to one side, uh, one of my little buffle feathers if, uh, if we have uh, too much detritus so I can flick that extra way but you're gonna see me get my head in shot an awful lot I'm sorry about that because I'm gonna do this like that see just to blow the dust away so I've got that in uh, let's work on a bit of grey around the edges of this uh, if your bird is a little bit smaller then you're going to find the eye quite a challenge. If it's bigger, of course, it's going to be less of a challenge to do the eye, but you're going to be there forever doing all the feather work. So it's entirely up to you how you interpret it. Uh, what shall I do uh, going out of that? I think I need a different brown. Let's go for this uh, kind of pinky brown colour that I've got. Very useful. Now, if you have... Uh, any questions about pastels uh, because there are a few things that we haven't talked about yet a few things that people haven't asked me yet and you're watching this live on Facebook then stick it into the chat and I will be happy to answer it I need to change the shape of that eye a little bit but for the time being it's okay um, and I can see some coming in already Trudy saying sorry missed the make of your pastel pencil sharpener it's cum k-u-m it's called an automatic long point sharpener if you go back to the um, previous blogs you'll be able to see uh, a link to it uh, on there 
Um, they're available all over the place. They are becoming a little bit rarer to find now, but there are other versions. Uh, if you're into pencils in a big way, then you'll end up with uh, several different brands of pencil sharpener and some you'll like and some you'll hate. It's like I said, it is a very contentious issue because you'll get uh, lots of artists going, oh no, you don't want to use one of those, you want to use one of these. And effectively it comes down to the fact which is the one that works best for you. If you are one of my uh, regular students, particularly if you are a student that uh, attends classes with me in person, then just remind me before I see you next and I'll bring my sharpeners down and you can have a go with them. And then that way uh, you're not necessarily wasting your money before we do that. Uh, so I'm adding a, a few little bits of detail now to get this eye in place, giving it life already, which is always uh, a good thing, isn't it? Doing a little bit of mark making with my black. Need to get that lovely highlight in. So to do that, I'm going to put the pastel pencil onto the paper and I'm going to twist it so that I get a nice bright dot. Uh, it's my pleasure, Trudy, not a problem at all. Let's uh, flick some of that away like that I'll clean up all of the the pastel pencil dust that's ahead of me uh, after the broadcast and let's do a, a few little finishing touches around there to finish it off I'm good with that I'm not going to really do an awful lot more I would probably do uh, a lot more if I was uh, working on this just in my own time but for the purposes of today I think that's fine and dandy let's work on that beak shall we uh, and what I do need to do for this, so that I'm not smudging anything, I need to give myself a bit of a hand rest so that my hand isn't going back into any of the pastel. So let's use that uh, bit of spare pastel mat. Now I've lost the definition of the beak, so that's the first thing I need to do, is to go back in and get and uh, reclaim some of that definition. So I'm going to use the black pastel pencil for that. Uh, we've got a black liner. Where's that black line come down? Kind of comes to a little bit of a hook here. And then it goes back over the top uh, and comes down very kind of fine line to get the crease in the beak. And it comes really quite far into the face. That's good. And then underneath here, let's, um, let's put that shape in properly. And then underneath you've got a similar shadow coming in around the base of that beak and then it very quickly uh, gets uh, overwhelmed by feathers. Now over the top of that we need to put some grey to get that blended in and um, actually bizarrely a sort of yellowy brown which is the one colour I don't have in front of me uh, let's see if I can reach over. I can reach over. Excellent. I had some emergency supplies uh, over just <laughs> to one side of me. Uh, so I've got a sort of yellowy brown coming in uh, around there and around the edges, coming into that peachy colour and coming down from the bottom. That's better. Uh, let's use my hand over the top of the pastel pencil so that I can block in a little bit of colour over the top of what I did last week. And probably that shadow underneath needs to be a bit uh, wider than it comes down to a flat shape there. And then this is where I'm going to use my paper stump because I don't really want those lines that I've drawn to show. I want it to be smoother than that. So I can go back in with my paper stump and do some blending. There is no way at all I'd be able to do that with my finger. My finger would be far too clumsy at all. And uh, you can do it with cotton buds, but of course the disadvantage with cotton buds and pastel mat uh, paper is that your pastel mat will absolutely shred those cotton buds. So better, I think, to do it with a tool that's uh, made for purpose. And uh, these aren't expensive at all. So I'm going to do a, a quick bit of a blow, excuse me, uh, that's better. So already coming to life a lot more. And this gives me the opportunity to answer Rosie's question. And she's put, do you believe in fixing uh, in between pastel layers? So what she, just in case you don't know what fixing is, uh, fixative is a kind of spray that you can put onto your pastel paintings. Uh, and 
it's got a bit of a, a a sort of a reputation for being able to stick the layers of your pastel down and that's not true it doesn't stick it it doesn't sort of provide a coating over the top all it does is act like a magnet for holding the pastel to your surface um, and I can even from 12 miles away I can hear my mum going no no you don't fix your pastel layers at all no absolutely I don't like pastel fixative at all I think it dulls the colors there are good pastel fixatives and there are bad pastel fixatives please don't buy into the I can use hairspray instead type of thing because believe me, if you knew what went in hairspray, you wouldn't spray it on your hair. And hairspray is designed to break down. That's the whole point of hairspray. Um, so you need a proper dedicated fixative. I don't use fixative for two reasons. One is that um, it dulls the color. And the second is because I'm using pastel mat, which takes layer upon layer upon layer, I don't need fixative. And then you've got this lovely fresh look to your pastels rather than a slightly dull look. In my experience, I have to preface everything within my experience. In my experience, when I have used a fixative, I've had to put all of my highlights back in again. So uh, I hope that makes sense. Thank you for your question, Rosie. And uh, I hope that that um, answers it. And she's put, I agree, thank you. And I'm uh, stalling for time because I realize that I don't have a pale green pastel for the top of my roller's head. But look, by magic, I just uh, manifested one out of nowhere. So let's get to work on refining the edges of our roller, just to give it a slightly feathery look. Uh, as you can see, I've already got a hundred things in my hand. Let's switch to a slightly softer white uh, to add a little bit of detail in here. So we need to put some absolutely delicious feathers are coming up either side of the beak. Let's just show you again what I'm looking at. So you can see you've got that very, very fluffy um, kind of head on it. Um, let's go back to the um, uh, overhead camera. Let's go to there. And uh, I think that you may have just had a slight um, loss of transmission there, but we should be back now. So hopefully you're back together again. You can blame my internet that. What I was uh, effectively saying was that we've got some uh, nice delicious feathers uh, going at, going uh, kind of up and across there. Uh, Jane, uh, whilst uh, all of that nonsense was going on, was saying that um, She's succumbed to ordering a box of Eunice and pastels. Good for you, my lovely. Uh, so you should. So you deserve to. Uh, treat yourself if you possibly can. Why wouldn't you? Uh, and then we need to introduce a grey in there somewhere so that we've got a bit of transition between the white and the green. And it breaks that green up a little bit. Coming down underneath. I really didn't think I was going to use all these pencils, but turns out really am. Coming down underneath, what I'm doing now is uh, adding a little bit of uh, texture over the top of my blocking in so that uh, we reclaim the um, the feather texture. Uh, good morning, Jean. And I'm adding, going back in and kind of adding the detail as I go so we can put those little extra feathery bits in there. And let's come back, let's put some highlights on them too, just to kind of distinguish. We want that very kind of fluffy beard that's going on, which is really awesome. And then maybe some ends to some of our colours. I'm not blending these out because I want them to look feathery, of course. And then into that uh, wing, we've got a bit of a feather coming up in there and coming down, kind of overlaying at the top. We need to get some of the pink back, don't we, into here a little bit. So I've got a little pink pastel pencil. It's all going on. But hopefully you can see that it's now sort of starting to come to life. Rather than looking like a foggy mess, which is uh, what it was doing before, it's coming back together a little bit more. Now, I'm going to start introducing uh, a dark blue on this side to act as a shadow colour. So rather than going for grey or anything like that, I could have used a grey. I'm going to use a dark blue 
to show uh, that this side of our roller is actually in shadow. Now this is a Caran d'Ache pastel pencil. Caran d'Ache pastel pencils are fabulous and beautiful and wonderful, but um, because they are one of the best pastel pencils, in my opinion, uh, around, they can be a little bit on the pricey side. So uh, I'm only really using this because it happened to be the right colour for what it was that I was doing doesn't mean that you can't use a different brand for this. They're a slightly thicker colour strip as well. If you compare, like certainly the um, the Stabilo with the, the Caran d'Ache, it's quite a thicker pencil. Uh, I'm going to blend some of these areas out because this is shadow as opposed to feather. So we'll get that blended in a little bit and then I can go back to adding my uh, wispy little textures over the top. What else do we need? We need to uh, come down the body a little bit. Let's uh, add some feathers. I need to make sure that my edge is feathery because we don't want it to look too smooth over this side. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, I was saying don't buy a lot of pastel pencils because you really don't need them. This blue, look at it in the photograph, okay? Look at it in your reference material. That, what I would call kingfisher blue, is next to impossible to find in a pastel pencil. I'm still on the hunt for it. So if any of you find that it's not cerulean, it's really not. The, I'm not talking about the colours on the wing, I'm talking about that greeny blue on the chest. It's not green, it's not blue, it's not cerulean, it's like a pale kingfisher colour. I can't find that anywhere. So uh, if anybody happens to spot a pastel pencil that is that colour, please do message me and let me know because uh, I just I just couldn't find one, could not find one in time. I'm going to actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix uh, much more of a kind of cerulean colour with that green on the paper and then I'm hoping it will be somewhere in the vicinity of it. But because I'm not doing masses of detail on this, it, it's not the end of the world, is it? It's really not the end of the world. I'm just trying to kind of give essence of roller. Uh, what else do I need? I need a bit of lilac. If you prefer to do your animal portraits with lots and lots of detail, then of course you can spend much more time than I have done on this section, on this part. I am rattling through it because uh, it's a live demonstration uh, and you don't want to be sit, watch me or being all self-indulgent. So there's no point me, I was just about to do those feathers and I thought there's no point me doing those really, is there, until I've uh, addressed these ones behind. So let's get some of that in. We need a little bit more yellowy brown coming down. So I'm, this is quite a bright yellow. Uh, so I'm using it very lightly indeed. Let's bring some of that down on this side. We need a bit of... Um, a bit of brown to go in with that too to soften it. We need a bit of grey in there to kind of look like shadow. We need a bit of dark blue. I mean, I couldn't have picked a, a subject more colourful, could I? I don't think it's possible. We need a bit of the dark blue coming in to show that that's wing. We need to work on the shapes for these feathers down at the bottom which are more blue than they are that kind of kingfisher colour and I'll work on the tail in a minute uh, do I need anything else on there so um, uh, Rosie is saying don't do a kingfisher blue but I've not actually seen it I do have that one uh, Rosie but uh, it was not really much different from some of the kind of bright blues it's just a really odd colour, isn't it? I mean, the green and the blue uh, optically mixing on the page is, is fine. I'm, I'm being super picky, really. Just because I think when you've, um, when you've got an eye for colour, you want to be able to match it, don't you? Uh, let's come down here. What's going on down here at the bottom? We've got some shadow. We've got some very fluffy things going on. So you probably notice I've got my hand over the top of my pencil now rather than here. That's uh, primarily to stop me doing uh, squeaky little repetitive marks and also so that I get all of the colour strip down on the surface and that way I get a uh, nice variation in my mark making. Uh, got some, I need to put some more peachy colour in. I like this peachy colour. What's this? 
um, number 191 that tells me nothing I need to look that one up for my on my color chart like it it's kind of a nice soft color not a big fan of um, pinks and uh, well no that's not true uh, I do pink but I don't do reds or yellows really but that is a, a really lovely one now I've gone a bit regular with my mark making and so I need to uh, break some of these lines up in different directions let's do that this is all a bit regular going on down the side uh, let's get rid of that let's put some more interesting upward strokes in as well as downward ones otherwise it's going to look man-made and not natural that's better and uh, then we can come down to the feet of our bird now I'm going to put I'm going to pick out some colors and I'm going to put the rest down otherwise I'm going to be in trouble uh, one of those one of those one of those I think that's all I need for the time and then I don't get hand cramp let's start off with uh, our yellow so for this Again, I'm not going to do as much detail as I might do if I was just working uh, on my own in the studio. I'm going to put enough in so that it looks like two feet, but doesn't over describe them too much. So we're putting a little bit of that yellow in. I probably should have worked on the branch first, but never mind. Uh, doing this live, sometimes you don't necessarily think it all through. <laughs> And then let's tidy this up a little bit. So I tend to do a lot of tidying up uh, with a, a dark or uh, an extreme light so that I can go back over the top. I do love, this is one of my favourite pencils, uh, this Faber-Castell Pit Black. It's just the perfect consistency for me for doing detail and for kind of finishing things off. So um, whilst I love my Carbothello pastel pencils, I have to say that uh, this little pit one has been a, a real favorite of mine. So let's get those talons in. We'll get one over here as well. I'm kind of doing essence of bird foot here. It's only to make it look like it's gripping on. That's all we're trying to do. And then we'll link it together with a gray to kind of get to understand that foot shape a bit more. I haven't got it spot on, it has to be said, but it's okay. It looks like a foot, which is all we're after. I think those talons need to be bigger. I think I'm doing it a disservice. And then where the um, feathers, the feathers need to go over the top of that foot. So it's emerging from the bird, not stuck on. Um, Rosie saying, what a handsome little fella and love the pan pastel background. Thank you, Rosie. That's very kind of you to say. So over on this side, let's do what's going on here. Ooh, what is going on here? Oh, you've got some dark in the background there where um, I'm guessing tail or something is disappearing off tummy or undercarriage, we'll call that. So I need to get that in and I actually need to get that blended in so that it doesn't interfere with the texture that's going on ahead of it. I, I sort of missed that. But there's the joy of pastels right there. You can go back and you can do your editing very easily indeed. You don't have to worry about having missed something out. There we go, I haven't worked on the tail, all those wing feathers yet for the, it'll be fine for the most part. That's my, uh, my mantra, isn't it, mum? It'll be fine. <laughs> right, what's going on over here? We've got uh, a foot coming out from there. We've got a little bit of detail required on that one, which is coming over the front. And we've got a little bit of detail on there too. So let's blend that in. Make sure that that's looking more cohesive. And then let's put those talons in. So this one goes up and over like that. This one comes down. What does that do? comes down and around I'm starting to lose the point on my uh, black so I'm going back over to my point sharpener that's better got it back again and then this one there's a bit of foreshortening on this one because it goes up and over and I need what have I done with that I need to put a bit of a highlight on these as well so I can use my white again my Derwent white is a nice hard white which is going to give me a nice uh, detailed line. 
so I can pop that in on those let's get one in over here we've got one on the top of there and we've got one on the top of there too right let's give this a bit of branch before we go any further and I'm, I'm not gonna overdo this really I'm gonna use just a, a few lines of pastel pencil to suggest that it's perched on something not gonna overdo it not gonna over describe it at all all it is is uh, joining the dots like I said I should have done this really before I did the talons but I didn't therefore I'm gonna put it in now and uh, we can just pretend that it's all fine and dandy can't we uh, what do we need we need a paper stump to blend some of that in I'm gonna be quite brutal with this blending because uh, I need it to look like it's in the background so I'm going to push quite hard with my paper stump to make sure that pastel is in the background I can always redo the talons if I mess it up but hopefully with just a, a few little quick blends here and there it will look okay let's get some of that colour in and up amongst I left a bit of a halo here so let's get rid of that putting that in over here and coming down to here now I'm gonna have to put some more twig branch or whatever it is on this side because I've got the tail uh, emerging from underneath it so I need this one uh, to make a little bit more sense uh, let's put uh, the bottom in of this one let's put a few uh, dark lines in as well to kind of suggest that it's twiggy shaped that'll do concentrate alley uh, put a little bit in and then we'll go in and we'll just blend the ends of those out here and there I don't want to get rid of it all because it's suggesting that there's a texture but I need it uh, to be a little bit softer there we go so it's kind of clinging on to something now which is cool uh, right let's finish off this uh, wing shape then we've got some where's it gone uh, we've got some kind of dark in between lines that are suggesting that we've got folds of feathers so those need to go in uh, and they need to occur higher up as well so we can bring some of those lines in and then it's getting uh, quite dark underneath over here so we can pop that in as well and there good morning rosemary and then uh, underneath we can work I'm going to definitely go back in with my black over this in just a second and we can make some suggestions of uh, other bits of uh, tail feather going in there let's stick all that down again because I'm getting hand cramp uh, and let's work some of this shadow in and up into our feathers kind of negatively as it were let's work some of this back in so that we've got an idea that there is a wing coming down I think as well I need to bring some of this yellow into the blue because we've got a little bit of a greeny thing going on in the photograph that'll be all right and then let's tidy let's do a little bit of tidying tidy this up we've got the the ends of that feather but then we've got this really meaty dark over here which is saying that the tail is in shadow so we'll get that in. Oh, I think we're, we're nearly there, aren't we? I think we're nearly there. We'll uh, smudge some of this in a little bit. Uh, Maureen is saying, have loved this demo. Thank you, Maureen. That's very kind of you to say. I'm glad that you are all enjoying it. I try to uh, put together um, interesting demos for our Technique Tuesday that hopefully help you out with your materials or maybe inspire you to have a go at something else not entirely sure how the the tail ends I think what I'm going to have to do is extend some of this color down so that because I don't think it, the tail is quite that short on this little bird so what I'll do is I'll extend the tail down here and there and we'll sort of leave it vignette style so that we're concentrating on this part of our bird and uh, and you know what I think I'm done with that I didn't want to overdo it today all I wanted to do was to uh, kind of give you an idea 
of how to uh, put something together in terms of drawing it out, blocking it in and then refining it. Now, Rubina is saying, just starting to get into pasta work in a serious way. So this project has been a huge help, Ali. Thank you, Rubina. You are very, very welcome indeed. Looks like Jilly is enjoying it. And uh, Dee is saying, beautiful. Um, so I'm glad you're all liking it. Now, don't disappear on me yet. Do not disappear on me yet. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed that. Um, it was quite a quick one. It was a three week project. Uh, I did, I pretty much predict that it was gonna be okay for three weeks uh, because the next two Tuesdays, I'm gonna disappear if that's okay with you because next week I have my Dorset inspired summer school so I have lots of people coming down into the county and uh, we're going to put a, a summer school together we're going to be painting out on location we're going to be experimenting whole mixed media spending uh, three glorious days together and I'm really looking forward to that and then the week after that I'm going to be doing all the prep that I can ready for 30 days so we are going to come back together for Technique Tuesday on the 6th of September. If you watch these live via Facebook, they're already events. They're already up there. I did them last night. But pop those 30 days in your calendar. Um, print it out uh, if you want to. Take a little screenshot of it, print it out, stick it in your diary just to remind you or write those prompts uh, into your diary. Like I said, you really, really don't have to um, do them all. Do them all if you want to. Tag me in every day. Put the hashtag 30 days has September. However it is uh, that works for you. Uh, all I want to do is to get a lovely community going. I want to see how people interpret those prompts. All of that type of thing. And that's the idea of it. It's to get you painting, drawing, creating. And a lot of my projects kind of cross over between art and craft. So if you are a crafter as opposed to a painter, I'm just reaching for something over here. If you are a crafter as opposed to a painter, don't worry, there are some little hints. You know I like to occupy those boundaries between craft and fine art. I like to explore that kind of no woman's land between those two things. Now, just as a bit of a teaser, uh, here is how 30 days is occurring. I'm putting all of my demonstrations into one sketchbook. This is it. I have already started it. There will be a video on day one showing you how I put this together, a little time lapse video. And then uh, there might already be some projects uh, lurking in there but you can't see them until the 1st of September. So uh, join me virtually for 30 days. Join me actually for a live broadcast on the 6th of September where we're using the prompt of birthday. It sounds like my mum isn't the only one who's got a birthday on that day. It would be lovely if you could uh, join me for that. But until then, please all stay very, very safe, safe, stay creative and take care of each other too. All right. Nice to see you all. Bye. Bye.